Hi, Kim Caster with Kim Caster Art. How y'all doing today? Today, for the first time, we're going to do a reveal on some new paintbrushes. I just got them in the mail just the other day. And um, we're going to uh, let you check them out. And just so you know, you can buy these brushes. I'll have some links down below in the description. And you can get a discount by clicking one of those links and you get like 20% off. And there's a code you gotta use, which is CASTOR, C-A-S-T-O-R, capital C. And these brushes are called uh, Fumiyu. There we go. And I'm gonna probably put some pictures of them up here a little bit later here. And I'll be doing a, a short painting, something pretty, something simple, probably a little simple landscape. I'll put it at the end of this video here. Now, they've got flats, they've got rounds, they've got almost about any kind of brush you want. Great prices. They feel great. They're all sables. This set here is a six piece set of flats, which I'm going to use these flats when I do the video. And uh, I'll get some better pictures of them here I'll put up. And these sizes, going from smaller to large, start at uh, number two. There's a two, a four, a six, an eight, a ten, and a twelve. And these are great brushes. They, they're feeling great on them. Um, I like the fact that you can pull them. I pulled one out already before. And the hairs don't pull out of them, which is great. And I'm my biggest brush that I like that I'm a big fan of is rosemary brushes and I've got flats lots of them from rosemary and these feel pretty similar in quality and this company uh, I have a hard time pronouncing it because it's Chinese uh, it's not Fumini it's Fumiyu you guys tell me how to pronounce it I don't know uh, Fumiyu brushes I would say they compare to rosemary brushes, which are out of, they're out of England, and they're pretty pricey too. Now this set right here, I did look online, is like twenty one ninety five, something like that. That's pretty good. That's a good price for good quality brushes. This company right here is uh, one of the top ten brush companies in China. So you know, there's a lot of brush companies out there. So. Being up in that top 10, I'm sure is you know, a big deal. I, I do like the way they are. I like the fact that they're, they're longer bristles. I like that because they hold more paint. Uh, if you're gonna paint, you wanna, you wanna be able to hold the paint. These are great for watercolor or acrylic, and I would not hesitate to use them in with oil. Um, in fact, pretty much any synthetic brush you can use with oil if you want to, but a lot of people prefer hog head or hog hair or horse hair or whatever. But uh, I'll use synthetic brushes also with oil. Some things you want that way, especially if you're doing portraits or whatever. I prefer synthetic. But anyway, check them out. Check out the links down below. Get yourself a discount on them. Go to their website and, and check them out. Like I said, use that code. Get a discount on the brushes. And stay tuned. We're going to do a short video. We're going to do a quick little landscape painting to test them out so you can see them. And I expect great results. And y'all have a good day. And we'll see you at the end. Hello everyone, we're going to do a speed up video of this old barn painting here. It's kind of a simple painting. It's taken a while, so I've decided to speed it up. So um, be patient with me. We're just going to uh, start here in the sky. We're using like a sky blue, maybe a tint of uh, phalo blue in there too. And some maybe some titanium white, Get whatever color sky you want. 
I'll probably be lightening it up here shortly. I'm sure you'll see that. So we're just going to rough it all in here really quickly and uh, move along at a fairly moderate pace. And we are using these uh, Fumi brushes. I can't pronounce the name because it's Chinese. You have to excuse me. It is in the beginning. You can see in the boxes there what the names of it were, of the brushes were. I'm using only flats, mostly the two, four, and six numbers for the flats. They work great from what I've seen here. I've already done the video, so I know how they work. I love the fact that none of the hairs come out of the brushes. They just hold together really, really well. Right now, we're starting to do some of the background mountains in violet. A little bit of uh, titanium white's been added to it. You may want to lighten them up a little bit more than I did, but uh, I think I do lighten it up some here eventually. Um, the colors I used were uh, titanium white, pale blue, Payne's gray, sap green. Uh, I think it was a lemon yellow I used. Violet, cad red, orange. Uh, burnt sienna, a sky blue, and of course, you know, titanium white. There the might have been another color or two I used. I can't quite remember. You can see the palette right there, or yellow okra. Um, I tried to show the palette, so uh, I've had people requested that, it, that I showed my palette as much as I could, so... And evidently, my program only allows me to record just so long at a period of time. I'm not sure why that is, but I have to make sure I keep a watch for that. So now we're just doing the water in the background. That definitely should have been a bit lighter. I'm not sure why I didn't make it any lighter than that. I just was trying to hurry along here. I was trying to make this into a a half an hour painting that was normal time frame but when I discovered how long it took to paint it which was a couple hours I did shorten it by speeding it up to like a half an hour so we're zooming along here we did add some white to the to the water you may want to you'll add some maybe some darker blue in there here and there too and I'll do that eventually now we're starting with the, the trees, most of the evergreen trees, all the ones that are green. We're going to put all the green trees in first. And then we'll worry about the fall colored trees. But these brushes, do, I really do a really good job. I, can, I love rosemary brushes. They're from England. I bought hundreds and hundreds of dollars of rosemary brushes. I just love them. And I'm surprised that these have the, the, as good of a quality as the rosemary brushes do. And doing the whole painting with just flat brushes is a little bit of a challenge for me. I'm used to using a multitude of brushes for a landscape. You know, fan brushes and things like that, script liner brushes, and so I did the best I could with just the flat brushes, which really wasn't that big of a deal, you know, I just had to uh, make adjustments to the way I painted, that's all. Now we're just uh, we're putting in some lighter green here for another tree up closer to us, and then we'll add some dark to it, so we can get some better contrast out of it. I wish I could paint that fast. But unfortunately I can't. I can paint pretty quickly, but not that fast. I am hope I'm close enough to the mic here. I've got it turned up some, so hopefully you guys are picking up everything I'm saying okay. I hope. I might need to uh, bring it up a little bit more. I'll, I'll do that now and bring it up some more. So hopefully it's... Not too loud and, and loud enough for you to hear me, okay? I'll try to remember to normalize everything when I do the 
editing, the rest of the editing here. Now we're just using some paints, a little bit of paints gray and some violet for that other background on that mountain that was on the right and along the bottom, which is basically the ground. We're doing the same thing with these lines right here, which is part of the field. And as you can see, we got a fence there and um, it's kind of like a, a driveway pathway. <coughs> Now we're going to do the foliage part of these other little trees in front of the evergreens. And we're basically mixing uh, yellow okra and yellow. And uh, some orange goes in there too. We'll see some orange in there too. I will eventually add the red up, and it's on the palette there right yet, but I did I did eventually add red to the palette. And if you're doing this painting, if you're following along to do this, you know, you put as many trees as you want in there. You may want to put more, you may want to put less in there, you may want to have all evergreens or all fall trees, that's up to you, but I just wanted a blend of both. I believe right now we're using the, I can't quite tell I'm going so fast. I think it's a number four brush. Now I'm, now I'm using the four, the other one was a two. Now we're using just a sap green with some white and yellow in it, making kind of a lime green. Olive green actually, if you have an olive green paint it would probably work just as well. You may, may have to add a little white to it or whatever. Or, a little more green, whichever suits you. And we're just going all the way across with that same color. And as you can see, you can probably barely see in the drawing, I, there's more trees to do as they come closer to us. I just want to get some of that ground in. We, want, we lightened it up a little bit more with some more yellow here. I should have drawn all the lines. There's, there's more lines there. I should have. I've, I drew them, but I didn't paint them. So I'll have to do that here in a little bit. But we're going around wh where the other trees are going to be. You don't, you don't have to do that. You can actually just paint all the grass and then just put the trees in. I did it for you guys' benefit so you could get an idea where I'm placing everything. Now we're going with a little bit of a darker green here. Probably darker than I need to be because I know I remember I remember lighting it up some more. <coughs> but we're basically doing a different shade of green on each layer that we're doing here. just going around the barn. The barn is actually a pretty simple barn, just one doorway to it. We'll be doing the wooden, some wooden slats on it and whatnot. Now we're adding the other evergreen trees in and we have another fall type tree that's going to be in there somewhere. As you can see I'm just kind of you know holding that brush sideways just dabbing it using the corner of the brush Gives you the same effect as if you're using a script liner brush or a round type of brush, whatever. It'll still work. Just the amount of pressure you use is, is what dictates the size of the dots you want to use. Probably more like V's than dots. So we are adding some fall colors there. Probably can't see them real well yet. We, you will eventually here. 
Because now we're going to start adding some of that red color. And make them a lot, look a lot more like fall. And they're orange, more orange. And go back over your lines. If you cover them up with some paint, you probably have to go back over them again a little bit. Although I don't, I don't mind painting a, a thin layer of the green over the lines. You can still see them. In fact, you could actually kind of make them kind of grassy looking a little bit if you want to. I just didn't have time to do that. And we're doing the uh, evergreens up in the front, over by the fence. And you see there's an evergreen, a little small tree right in between each section of the fence. Okay, now we're uh, cleaning up that one area here. We'll probably move on to that. I'm not sure if I did the barn. I might have done the barn before I went further. Don't forget to varnish your painting when you're done. Um, you know, at least put a couple of thin coats of varnish on it. I'm not sure if I'll even save this one. I may or may not. I don't know. It's pretty quick. I may add more to it eventually. I'm not sure. Okay, here's where I'm going to lighten up that darker green. I do believe where I'm going to move it down first. Yeah, I'm going to do the other ones first. This is where I noticed that that darker green was a little bit too dark. And uh, we'll fix that. And the only thing we used brown for really was uh, the fence. Burnt sienna. That's all we used. There we go. We're going to lighten up that green. I knew that was it was just too dark. And we didn't make it too light. I just want to get it lighter than it was. And I'm fixing a couple of spots where I had another color bleed over. Well, my hands actually moved and put the wrong color in the wrong place. So I'm fixing the, the grassy area. As you can see, I went over them lines right there. But we'll have to... We'll fix that. And I'm still using, I believe, the number four or number six. Now, don't forget, in down in the description here, there are links to these brushes. And, any, in fact, any of the brushes that you like at that site... You can go through and look at the other brushes. When you do your checkout, use the code CASTER, capital C-A-S-T-O-R, and you will get 20% off your order. Okay? Don't forget that because, you know, that can save you quite a bit. I did look at the price on this set of six brushes here, uh, the flats. I think there were six. Yeah. And they were like twenty one ninety five, which is actually a really good price for a good quality brush. And they are from from using the brushes, I can say they're a good quality brush. They they hold together really well. I like the way they hold together. I like that they got a little bit longer bristles on them because they tend to hold more paint. That's a big thing for me. If I'm doing backgrounds or something like that, I don't like to have to keep grabbing more and more paint all the time, constantly. I like to be able to get my brush in there and get a, a decent amount of paint so I can just spread it out. Now I'm adding some orange tones into the grass. And I'll be putting a little bit of red in there and some different colors, yellow. Kind of mixing it up. Making it look more like it's a real grassy lawn area. 
Now we're doing the roads. Basically, just using the white with a little bit of blue in it. Kind of the road lines from where somebody would drive in a tractor or whatever. Or whatever. As far as we're going to go, it's right where it is. You can always do more things too, like, you know, add a few rocks here and there. You know, depending on where it is. Now we're doing the barn, and um, we're actually using a violet, a little bit of, I think a little bit of Payne's gray here and there, and a little bit of uh, white, titanium white. <coughs> Don't forget the shadows under the eaves. Yeah, I kind of had to move the paper around just so I could get to the right angles. There's a... Uh, it's just really a block in right there. You'll see here in a moment we'll be adding white slats there for the boards on that side. A little bit of white on the back. Pretty simple little barn, nothing real complicated about it. And I'm just adding the the white boards. Then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Payne's Gray, a little bit of that violet for the shadow areas. And the lines down the front of the barn, indicating the boards that are there. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll fill in the doorway, but we'll we'll make that a bit dark here in a minute. We'll put some more Payne's Gray in there. Payne's Gray is not really, it's, it's you might think it's black because it's pretty dark. But it is a lot better. My paintings really improved a lot when I switched to Payne's Gray and stopped using black. I don't use black hardly ever anymore. I use Payne's Gray. I'm a big, big, big fan of Payne's Gray. Especially doing portraits, too.